Guten Tag. In this video, we're going to go over installing Kali in VirtualBox. So the first thing we are going to do is download Kali Linux. So we can go to Kali.org, K-A-L-I.org, go to Downloads, download Kali Linux, and we're going to download the one for VirtualBox. So if we scroll down, uh, we've got the Kali Linux 64-bit VBox version, which is what we are going to download. This version uh, will run in VirtualBox, which I have installed right here. So let's click on the Offensive Security Download page. <clears throat> if you scroll down, there's a couple different tabs here you have to click on. The first one here is VMware, which we do not want because we're running this in VirtualBox. VirtualBox is right here. It's a OVA file. We need the 64-bit version. And this is uh, Kali 2018.4. It's 3.6 gig. I've already downloaded it, but right here, if you click on this, it should start downloading, and it looks like you know mine will take about an hour. So I've already downloaded it. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next step. So the next step is once I have it downloaded, I'm going to go to VirtualBox Manager, and I'm going to click on Tools here and import a virtual machine. So let's browse to the virtual machine, the one I just downloaded for Kali. Right here, this is the OVA file right there click on next and it automatically pulls in a few of the settings here uh, like the product name the URL <clears throat> etc uh, along with the amount of RAM all this stuff is okay for now we can change this later if we want to if we want to add more RAM for instance or more CPUs we can do that later Go ahead and click on import, and this will take quite some time to import this. It says three minutes remaining. I'm not sure how accurate that is. Um, now it went to four. Uh, this may take 20 or 30 minutes to import. Once this is imported, we will resume the video and finish the setup. We're going to go. We're going to start this, but let's just verify a couple settings here. Uh, the base memory is two gig, two processors, etc. This is what we set uh, was automatically set when we did the import, so no surprises here. We will, however, get an error message when we start this about the USB controller. So we'll go ahead and click on start, and here's the message I was talking about. This is easily resolvable. If you click on details here and expand it, it gives you some more information. Uh, it says implementation of the USB 2.0 controller not found. And we can install this Oracle VM virtual box extension pack to resolve that. To resolve it now so we can get Kali booted, let's go to settings. Let's go to USB and let's change this from 2.0 to USB 1.1. If you try to change to 3, you'll see down here the same message appears. So invalid settings detected with 3 or 2, but when we go to 1.1, it disappears. Click OK. Now we'll go ahead and start Kali. It should start up fine this time. Never know. We'll see if it starts. So go ahead and close that. And I'm in scaled mode here with VirtualBox. You can hit enter to get out of scaled mode. You can do the host key and C. The host key is the right control button by default. Here it comes. So we're going to log on as root, R-O-T. And the default password is root backwards, which is T-O-O-R. 
There are two ways to update Kali. You can do it through the GUI or you can do it through the command line. I prefer to do it through the command line. A lot of people like to do it through the GUI. We will walk through the differences in both of those. So here it is. It finally came up. So if we just wait a while, we'll get a message that says the GUI needs or the Kali needs updating. As I mentioned, <clears throat> I like to do it. And if you click over here on the right side, this little down arrow, you can go to these settings right here, which are the little tools. And this will give you some information about Kali. So right now, if I scroll down here a little bit, details, uh, we see our host name is Kali, which if we're using this operationally, we want to change that to something different. Uh, we're using 2 gig of RAM, 64-bit, <clears throat> and we're using this much space in the hard drive. But I can click for updates right here. This is one way to do it, or I can do it through the command line. Uh, let's do it through the command line, which is the way I prefer to do it. So I'll click on a terminal window, but you could do it through here. Uh, to make this larger, you can hit uh, Control Shift Plus. We'll do an APT get update. This will update the local list of packages available. If you want to see what APT does, we can do an APT H. And this, if we scroll up a little bit here, APT is a command line package manager. And these are the most used commands. There are other ones we can do. But for this purpose, we're going to do update, which we just did, which updates the list of available packages. And then we're going to do upgrade. So we already did the apt get update. We're going to do the upgrade, which will upgrade the packages. So let's do that now. Uh, and if we can hit the up arrow, we see we did apt get update. We do apt get upgrade, which is the process here. It tells us uh, all these packages here are going to be upgraded, which is quite a few because we just now installed uh, Kali or imported it. And it's going to take about 254 meg of additional space. So go ahead and click on or type in Y, press enter. It will take a while to download all the new packages. Once it downloads them all, it has to do the updates. It looks like it's still updating. Uh, one of the things I wanted to point out while this is updating is the network configuration of Kali by default in Oracle VirtualBox. If I open a new window, a new terminal window. Again, uh, Control Shift Plus, make this bigger. If I do an IF config, you'll notice I have an IP address of 10.02.15. This is the default NATed IP address that is assigned via DHCP from VirtualBox. If I go look at my VirtualBox settings, up here to file um, preferences go to network there are no nat networks configured in the gui with virtualbox but by default virtualbox will use the 1002 network and the default gateway will be did will be 1002 .2. So let's research that uh, 10.0.2.15. There's a article, or it's part of the um, manual for VirtualBox. It's called Fine Tuning uh, VirtualBox NAT Engine. I believe it's that one right there. So it's Chapter 9, Advanced Topics. And it's, I always remember it's called Fine Tuning here. So the, the challenge with this is, 
and this is section 9.10, is you cannot change the default through the GUI. You have to go uh, to a command prompt and do it on the host machine. And it's a little bit confusing because you see right here 10.0.x.0 slash 24 is the default, where X corresponds to the instance of the NAT interface plus two, uh, which is brilliant. So in this case, the guest is assigned the address of 10.0.2.15 if that is the first instance, which it is, and the gateway is set to 10.0.2.2. .2 .2. To change that, you can go to your C drive, program files, Oracle, VirtualBox directory, and run this command right here and change the, the network to be something uh, besides the 10.0.2 uh, network, slash 24. So I thought I'd point that out. Uh, it looks like, let's see if our updates are finished here. Um, let's see, there's... Looks like they're still running. So we have here, uh, it's brought us to a prompt here, some information about SSH. You can just hit Q to quit that. It will keep running through the updates. And if you ever see another prompt with a colon, it's asking you to read over something. You could just hit Q to quit, and it should continue on. So that's really what we wanted to cover in this video. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them beneath the video and please subscribe to our channel. I will talk to you later.